And you mentioned Jerry Judy, your number one guy, teammate there. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, the next one off the board lands in Denver. They have Cortland Sutton, a nice wide receiver who really took a a great step last year. But still, there was really no one behind Sutton that was a clear-cut guy to be in that lineup. So it seems like a pretty glove-like fit. You know, you already mentioned some things you love about Judy. So in addition to that, you know, how do you think he's going to fit in Denver with that skill set he's bringing to the table? Yeah, I, I, again, I think that this works out so well for them. And you you can tell from this past draft class that they had that their entire mission was to get weapons around Drew Locke. Like, they are all in on trying to allow Drew Locke to be as successful as possible, you know, because they, uh, they, they draft Noah Fant high last year. And then they draft another tight end, which who has kind of a similar profile in Albert Okawebunam, right? And so, you know, they draft Jerry Judy. He's big time on separation. They also draft KJ Hamler, who I know we're going to talk about in a little bit, who is a great separation kind of player. And so you have Sutton as that X guy on the outside. And you like that because he was the steady force. He was the big body. He was the guy you could go to. But Jerry Judy is another go-to option in a different way. I talked about his footwork and his route running being so precise and that being such a high floor in the NFL that can be the best friend of Drew Locke who is coming into his sophomore year and you're trying to avoid that sophomore slump. We often talk about tight ends as the quote-unquote security blanket players of old. You know, that's that's how it used to be uh, just a couple of years ago where these were the guys that you had them come off the line of scrimmage, you had them run like a five-yard curl route or an out route or something like that, and after the quarterback went through maybe his first or second options, he could always dump it off to the tight end, and that was an easy completion that could get yards, that could keep things going. Now you can do that with Jerry Judy. And since Noah Fant is so good at attacking the seam and getting vertical, you don't have to have a player like Noah Fant stay in and be that like security blanket kind of guy all the time. Now you can free up Noah Fant because of how reliable we think Jerry Judy is going to be with his route running, whether it's in the slot or to the outside. I mean, if you put Jerry Judy in the slot and you give this guy two way goes, he's going to be cooking even the most experienced slot cornerbacks all day just because he is mm-hmm. so good at what he does. And so you talked about it being you know, a, a glove-like fit, him being able to come in right away. That's what I see too. I, I Jerry Judy was not only my number one wide receiver, he's one of my number one fits in the entire NFL draft because of how he is going to affect this offense and how he is going to open things up for Corlin Sutton, for Noah Fant, and for Drew Locke as he scans the field. I mean, you're painting a picture here of an offense that's going to be very tough to stop as long as Drew Locke can distribute that ball. Are you looking at Drew Locke as like a potential monster in fantasy if he could, with all these weapons around him? Or what do you think of Drew Locke? Is he going to be able to unlock all these guys? Yeah, look, I, I obviously love the live arm. You know, when I was mm. when he was coming out th- through the NFL draft, you loved that potential of him. I'm not ready to do any predictions, but I am ready to set the stage and kind of say, like, look, it's on lock right now. At this point, I, I know this offense is young. Like, so, like Sutton's obviously in there. Judy and Hamler are two guys who are rookies coming in. Okuwe Bunam's another rookie coming in. Noah Fant is there. Uh, it's it's just his second year. They've got Melvin Gordon that's coming in. They've got Philip yeah. Lindsay, who they know they can lean on. The offensive line should be a little bit better. They added Lloyd Cushenberry, who I thought should have been drafted a lot sooner than what he was. Um, you're hoping Dalton Reisner rises to the occasion, full pun intended, and then Garrett Bowles stops committing so many penalties, right? All of that to say, when you ask for a Drew Locke prediction, the ceiling is about as high as Locke can take it, right? And that's, yeah. that was the whole point of, I think, what they were doing this offseason is that as much as Drew Locke can progress, they have the offensive blueprint to match him all the way. And so I don't know what we're going to see in Locke because he was a volatile player, right? I mean, he did have a fun arm but a dangerous arm you know mm-hmm. and so that's what his narrative was coming into this season and so i say all that to say like if lock gets things under control if the light really comes on for him they've got the weapons around him for him to really succeed this season i i love the take and he's also going at like quarterback 23 24 right now in average draft position so at that point you know you're looking yeah. around 13 14 it's kind of one oh, of those yeah. why not because if if everything comes together it, whether right. it can or not we'll see but that's one of those situations where like you said the ceiling is as high as he'll take it that's pretty deadly especially in a division too where it's shaping up to be some shootouts right there with the chiefs and, you know and yeah and, he, yeah, and he's he's he might be a great candidate depending on how your roster is. Like I know people don't always carry two quarterbacks depending on like how the league is. But if you typically in your league, however it is set up, get the stash a quarterback, yeah. then 
this might be a really great second half of the year QB. Like if you don't take a QB early and you take maybe like a mid round guy and then Drew Lock later, Drew Lock might be a player who after the first eight weeks of the season, it was a little bit of trial for trial and error for him. This mm. offense might catch fire in the final eight games of the season. So he's a guy to definitely look out for, I think. Excellent points all around. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.